It's nice to um, have uh, people here in, in the meditation hall. And um, we are slowly, you would say, kind of opening up and returning. So I want to thank um, uh, new people and um, people that uh, came last night. Uh, thank you for making the effort to come um, uh, to the mountain and, and practice with us. It's, um, it's quite um, important to experience uh, the practice or your own life uh, through practice um, and in person and together to practice together is very important. Um, The, the meditation that we do in, in our uh, Soto lineage, um, it's, it's quite uh, different from, from other, other styles of practice and other lineages. So the more, um, the more you do it, just like anything else, the more you, you practice, and return uh, to your life or the life that, that is uh, right in front of you, the more that um, our life, your life, my life, uh, all things will, will turn into um, a, religious, a religious way of being. So, so there's, a, there's um, a depth and a quality um, uh, to your life that uh, you can bring to it, or actually a life uh, can bring it also to you. So the the, the zazen that we do, or the the just sitting, um, um, it's like an anchor, or it's a reference point, or it becomes a standard. Um, in your life, instead of the, the conditioned way of being, it, it becomes a reference point. So like when you're out um, in the ocean, um, it's something that, so the, the, waves, the waves go up and down on the surface of the ocean. The ocean could be a quite tumultuous at times, but then there's something that grounds you within within this, uh, you would say, impermanence, instability, and also our conditioned thinking. So it differs um, between other, other types of meditation or doing yoga to become mindful or to cultivate your mind or to um, uh, become a better person but it, but it addresses just sitting uh, silently together and um, uh, deeply anchored and sitting and um, being, being truthful uh, to where you are and where, you're, where you aren't are. <laughs> um, it's basically how, how to live out uh, your life. You know, it, it's, it's really uh, important. So it's not just, I know the people that, that come here, um, of course, it's good to want to, to wanna know meditation. And so it is good. I'm not trying to, to scare you guys away, but, but you have, oh, you have 
you have um, you have dropped into the jaws of the dragon, you would say. Uh, so it's not about learning learning something, but it's actually um, returning to your life and to 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 the truth of your life or yourself. So, I mean, what we what we've been doing in the last couple of weeks, there's there's been a lot of um, activity. Of course, I think the people that that uh, have returned here, you can see that our tree that we cut down, we cut down the tree. Uh, there was a a big tree in the, in the space in front of our song house, so we we cut it down, and it was it was quite. It was quite the work. We had a um, an old work leader uh, who came out from Hawaii, who now is an arborist that actually helped us. So we did um, a whole week. This was the week before this one. Uh, we were chainsawing a lot and um, doing manual labor. So we would start our days of course, with zazen, and then end the day with zazen, and then all day basically a work, um, um, trying to uh, remove the tree. <coughs> one our one of our practices that we do um, uh, at uh, Sonoma Mountain or or the temple is is actually every day at um, at. 8.45, then we do a temple cleaning. And so it's called Soji. And we um, gather around uh, in, in the Sangha house, the table, and, and uh, a person um, goes down a list of things to do, like uh, clean the toilet, um, a vacuum, vacuum the room, or take the garbage out. Um, and we all raise our hands and then do this uh, this cleaning. And the cleaning only lasts for uh, 20 minutes. But this activity that we do together is very important because it allows us to get out of our uh, thinking mind. And also, um, a lot of times, actually, I, I don't like to do I don't like to do it, but then you have to do it. So you have to follow you follow the schedule, and then you clean. And something something happens uh, when you um, uh, are just cleaning. Something something happens, and it's the same with um, when we remove the tree. We're chainsawing. We're chipping brush. Um, we're moving huge, huge logs. And so this, this um, is all rooted actually in the spirit of Zazen and becoming anchored uh, to what uh, comes up in your life and what you have to do act act actively. So I think in the, I think a lot of, a lot of times, um, People, people misunderstand a Zen practice as only being in the meditation hall. And then when you're out of the meditation hall, then you're free. <laughs> um, it's kind of like uh, last night I was, I was talking to some people, uh, Zazen instruction, it's kind of like going to a gym, right? So you work out, you work out, but then when you get out of the gym, you still, you lift up your, your shoes and you know, you, you uh, lift your groceries or you go shopping. And that's also, that's using your muscles. So actually everywhere you go is, is actually the Zen zone. It's the meditation hall. But we put too much emphasis on trying to cultivate something in this room. Um, and then we forget about what, what happens outside of the room. So uh, yesterday when I was, uh, cleaning, um, I, I was reminded by uh, this uh, calligraphy that, um, that Hoitsu Suzuki, Shinri Suzuki Roshi's son uh, did for the Zen Center in 1985. And, it, and it, um, it's actually uh, 
probably Jindo knows it. Uh, it's by the work leader's desk. And and the saying the saying is one one day of work is one one day of no eating. So um uh Hyakujo, uh, there's a story about Hyakujo who actually um brought uh I think it was it was probably around 700, 780. Uh, he brought uh, manual labor or work practice to actually uh, the monasteries in China. And so that was um, the first time that happened and actually was against, it was against the, the actually the, the monastic code at that time because all of them were supposed to just practice, but he started to integrate then activity and, and to wake up the people um, to, to do actually manual labor. So, um, so the story goes that that uh, uh, they they call the senior a student calls uh, that they yell out a uh, fushin, and everyone gathers uh, around in a circle, and then they start to do manual labor, and and it's all the teachers, uh, whether you're. Um, doesn't doesn't matter of your ability whether you're young or old or or new or enlightened or not enlightened or everybody uh, gets out and starts to do manual labor so they start to work actually in the fields um, quite quite like we did uh, removing the tree. Hyakujo at the time he was very old and he he. Um, um, he was he was a, a very bright and um, a red um, and, and also a very um, a good teacher. So he worked uh, with his students, but he was very old and he and he could barely do it. So um, a couple of days after, then uh, one student took his his shovel and his pick, and then he hid it underneath the, the temple stairs. And so Hyakujo was trying to look for his, uh, his pick and his shovel, but he couldn't find it. So Hyakujo then went into his room and then just started to sit zazen. And so the, 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 the monks and the nuns were, were happy that he was in his room. So they brought him food, of course, to feed Hyakujo, but Hyakujo wouldn't eat. You know, he, he wouldn't eat. So they're all, they brought him more food and they brought him more food. And so he still wouldn't eat and he was, he was just sitting zazen. So a younger student then went into his room and asked Hyakujo, um, master, why, why don't you eat something? You should eat, you should eat. It's good for your body. And Hyakujo said, one day of no, of no work is one day of no eating. So what what it actually um, you can you can actually say that it's it's one day of no zazen, or one day of no practice is one day of actually no eating. So this is kind of where the the um, the the groundwork of of samu, um, how it was actually brought from seven hundred or even earlier. I think. I think Hui Ning's time uh, was the time, actually the first Samu was, I think that was the first, uh, it was when, um, when Hui Ning went, went to, um, Hung Jin went to, to the fifth patriarch and then they, they sent him to do some manual labor. I think that's the, 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 the first that's documented. Um, so the word Samu, um, Sa, um, means to, to work or to actually production or labor. And, and mu means to uh, devote uh, one's attention. 
uh, it's a service or it's an offering. And it's, it's actually a, a Buddhist, a Buddhist service. So it's the same as, as a uh, Buddhist service. You would, you would say it's a, the, a sutra. So it's much like kin hin, uh, how we do a slow walking meditation. They call a kin hin also, also sutra walking. So sutra is to actually sew, sew your activity uh, together. So, um, when we walk kin hin, we take we take half step. We breathe in, and then we breathe out. And you take half step, and you feel you feel the ground, feel the the crown of your head up towards the sky, and then you breathe in inhalation, and then exhalation. You take a step. So everything that you do is is um, you would say that activity itself. Or, or it's a one moment uh, sewn together with the other moment. So it's the same thing with, with Samu. Uh, Samu can be actually uh, translated to as, as um, uh, a work sutra. So it's interesting about the pick and shovel. The pick and shovel sutra is is also reciting um, a Buddhist, a Buddhist, uh, what do you say, a, a Buddha's words, reciting Buddha's words. Um, it's it's an expression. The sutra is also an expression of our practice and of our life. So the sound, the sound of the pick and shovel, is the expression of the Buddha's teachings. So it could be working in the workshop like you're doing. Uh, you're, you're making uh, workbenches in the workshop. That's actually Buddha's work. When we rake the ground in front of the, the Sangha house or when we clean the toilets, uh, when we work on the com computer, that's, that's Buddha's work. So this is all, this is all then, um, you, you would say, well, religious activity but but it's a devotion devotion to something that's that's bigger than oneself uh, that we uh, aim that we aim aim for but it arises very naturally that's if if we're open open to it so it's the activity of something that arises when you you are fully engaged with it and uh, it's, uh, I was reading that Samu um, is one of the, the most important uh, components of Zen. So it's working. It's actually um, a listening to a teacher's talk. Also, it's, it's meeting, meeting a teacher, a one-on-one. -on -one, so that's Doksan. And then the other one is, is Zazen. So I was kind of reflecting on when I was when the talk was it kind of came together, but you know it was it's hard sometimes. So so I was thinking about then taking out the tree. Um, I was working with a, a couple other people, and we had to actually um, we had to to grind out we had to grind out the the stump of the tree, which is quite big. And then we had to take out a root, um, and the root was was showing. So we had to we had to either cover it or we had to to take it out. So somebody got an axe and uh, and a pick, and we started to to go at it, go at go at the root. Um, what when you when you take when you swing, when you swing the pick uh, in the air, we had a discussion about it, or how how you swing it. And actually, there's there's of course there's different ways to swing to swing a pick, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter actually how you swing it. You could wave it around any way you want. You could hold it upside down. You can. You know, 
you, you could hold it with one finger, but you need to hit, then you need to strike that root or strike the spot in a certain place, in exact place, and then something happens. And that's also with your effort, um, uh, but your, your effort, when you strike that place, uh, strike it a certain way, it has to be exact. So it could be a weak swing, it could be a strong swing, it could be an up-down swing, it could be just a very strange one that we've never seen before. Like a baseball player when they're hitting, when they're hitting the when they're hitting the ball, or or you'd say a golf player. They have everyone has their own, own style. It could be sleepy style, it could be anxiety style or fearful style. But when you swing it, you have to, to hit it on the spot. And when you hit the root, then boom, then there's these chunks that fly off and then the root, the root then is gone. So it's this striking uh, that, that's very interesting. The, the striking in our practice and being, um, being exactly where you are. When you, swing, when you swing something, when you're living your life, and when, when, you, when you encounter your life right on the spot. Um, So when we, when we are working in this way or when we are living our life in this way, um, we, we, of course, we see, we see the tree or we see our tools. Um, uh, we, hear, uh, we hear the chainsaw in the background or actually there was another tree that fell and back of the song the house when we're working and it was quite big and we heard this boom you know we all ran out what's that there's another tree that fell in back of the song the house so when we when we see when we see things in this way and then when we also when we hear hear sounds in this way with engaged with an engaged body when we're when we're totally engaged fully engaged this way then something something happens that's mysterious, and it's very it's something opens. It's an opening that happens. So it's um, it, it's intuitive or it's very intimate. You become with things, and I think everybody knows uh, what it is or have have felt this way before, like seeing like going to the mountains and then seeing, seeing across the valley. Actually, we, uh, I went down with my, my son and my wife, Caution, and we, we drove down um, Big Sur and we camped for two days on Big Sur. And we, um, we hiked down then to the water and then there was a lot of people there and everyone's just, they're staring out into the ocean. <laughs> They're, they're not, they're, you're not looking at anything, but they're, they're staring out into the ocean. And why do people do this? Stare out into the ocean or look, look at a tree, you know? Or why do, why do people look at a sunset? It's because they're being intimate. Something happens intuitively that then everything becomes themselves. Everything is us. That's what we recognize. And then that's when we become free from all this greed, anger, and ignorance. So this is quite, 
this is the jaws of the dragon. So it, it, it is a nice place to come and please come back. I want everyone to come back. But it is very important and very, very deep practice. Uh, and it, it's facing your life in, in, this, in this truthful way. Um, so it's not like seeing things how we usually see things, like how I see that camera. It's not, it's not a part of me. The camera's over there. Or it's how it's, or, or that war is in Ukraine. That's not me. That's someone else's war. Or you see that the trash that's floating in the ocean, that's someone else's trash. I put my trash in the trash can. That's where my trash goes. But that's your trash. It's my trash. Everything then is a part of yourself. So that, that we are all interconnected in this way. And so then that, that's why then, then the, the reflection of the moon in the water is not a part, is not a part. So we're not, we're not separate from, from all things. So when we realize this, when we swing the pick and when we hit this spot, then we cannot help but be, be actually a very true person in this way. So it, it, it's it, in the stories of the Zen masters or, or monks and nuns when they see um, peach blossoms a, across the valley and then, then they become enlightened. Or you, you hear about a story about um, somebody was, was uh, a, a Zen master was hoeing um, you know, some gravel and then broke a tile, but then the tile the tile hit the bamboo and then hearing was the enlightenment. Um, then everything becomes, actually everything becomes the chainsaw or everything becomes the swinging. Everything then becomes Zazen, everything becomes you. So this, this, uh, this way of being, of course, we, we have our individual self that that we, we have thoughts, um, we have our desires and, our, and, and all the things that we strive for, but at the same time then there's an opening uh, when we surrender this, this actually this very self-centered view. So when we, when we sit then on the cushion, then we let go, we let go of all these thoughts that we have about ourselves, about zazen, about the Zen Center, about your thinking, and we let it, we let it all go. We let it all go. Um, Or maybe I'm, I'm driving the point too too much home, but the the then then uh, your your a small self um, becomes then the this this greatness of the universe that we feel, and that's that's the body of of then the universe that I mean this this wonderful. That we we sit here with, we think we're confined to this body, but then this body is is quite big and vast, but we we can't conceive conceive it, but we think we're smart enough and try to figure everything out, but we're not. We can't we can't even conceive of how big this body is, but when we are wholeheartedly living our life and when we face. Um, our life right in front of us and very truthful, then this body begins to, I don't even want to say grow because it's infinite in size. It's an infinite in size.
there's a there's a writing that a uh, Dogen um, Dogen he's our the founder of or one of the founders or is the founder of the our Soto lineage. Um, he wrote um, many works on uh, basically the the different views of of just sitting. So he wrote just thousands and thousands of words about about the different angles of sitting and one of them is is called shoji and and shoji is is uh, a birth uh, about birth and death um, part of it I, I read uh, just this section Your present birth and death itself is the life of Buddha. If you attempt to reject it with aversion, you thereby lose the life of Buddha. If you abide in it, attaching to birth and death, you also lose the life of Buddha. and are left with only its outward appearance. You attain the mind of Buddha only when there is no hate, there, when there is no hating of birth and death and no desiring of nirvana. But do not try to measure it with your mind or explain it with words. When you let go of both your body and mind, forget them both and throw yourself into the house of Buddha. And when functioning begins from the side of Buddha, drawing you into accord with it, then with no need for any expenditure or either physical or mental effort, you are freed from birth and death and become Buddha. Then there can be no obstacle in anyone's mind. Um, so maybe I, I have said it over and over, but it is, so it is uh, throwing, throwing your life, throwing your, your wholehearted self into the life of the Buddha or into the house of the Buddha. It's not, the Buddha is not anything apart from actually you yourself or your life itself. Um, so even the thinking, um, your script or our scripts that we have that come up in sitting or that come up in, in your life, that is also a part of Buddha's work, but it's not apart from you. A house is, the Buddha's house is nothing that you have to, to put it somewhere or to get it from somewhere, but it's you. Everything that you face then, then is, is actually Buddha's, Buddha's work. So that, that's why the activity of of the activity of the activity itself starts to do itself when when you let go of of your self-centered thinking or of, of, of our self-centered thinking. Um, there's a footnote. Down here. A pure land affinity may be admitted if Buddha in the expressions throw yourself into the house of Buddha and when functioning begins from the side of Buddha, that's from the functioning begins then from all things. It could be the bird on the roof. The functioning then begins, it's not your doing. The functioning begins from the side of Buddha. So it's the root that's the Buddha. The function happens. 
it's the pick, it's the swinging. And then there's something that pulls you. It's the seeing, it's the seeing of the ocean. It's the seeing of the mountain. It's the mountain seeing you. And then that's the pole, the pole of the Buddha. So that's the side, then the side of the Buddha is pulling. So it's not your practice anymore. It's not your zazen that you do. So of course, when you're when you're in accord with the Buddha, or when you are wholeheartedly living your life in this way, you cannot help but then actually become a, a true person. True, becoming a true person where you are. I read this one, this is one short paragraph. It's another one of Dogen's writings and it's from Zenki, a total dynamic working. So life, can be likened to a time when a person is sailing in a boat. On this boat, I am operating the sail. I have taken the rudder, I am pushing the pole. At the same time, the boat is carrying me and there is no eye beyond the boat. Through my sailing of the boat, this boat is being caused to be a boat. Just this moment of the present. At this very moment, there is nothing other than the world of the boat, the sky, the ocean, the water, the birds above, the shore have all become the moment of the boat which is utterly different from moments not on the boat. So life is what I am making it, and I am what life is making me. While I am sailing in the boat, my body and mind and circumstances and self are all essential parts of the boat. And the whole earth and the whole of space are all essential parts of the boat. What has been described like this is that life is the self and the self is life. 